Meet the greet in the phony clue. I, Nate the Great, am a great detective. I have just solved a big case. It did not look like a big case when it started this morning. My dog Sludge and I were running around the block for exercise. We ran past Annie and her dog, Fang. We ran past Rosemond and three of her cats. We ran past Finley and his friend Pip. We ran home. I saw a piece of paper on my doorstep. I picked it up. It was thin paper. Vita was printed in ink on it. The paper was turned off around Vita. What did it mean? I got my dictionary. I looked up Vita. I found that Vita could be the start of a word. Vita could be the start of vitamin. A, B1, B2, B6, B12, C, D, E, G, H, K, or P. Or, beta could be the middle or end of a word. It could be part of a long message. The mystery got bigger as I thought about it. I, Nate the Great, knew there was a missing piece or pieces of the paper. Who or what had torn them? I let Sludge sniff the pa piece of paper. We will look for the pieces, I said. I, Nate the Great, thought. Who or what tears paper? Of course, Rosemont's cats, four cats, 16 claws. 16 claws could tear a lot. I wrote a note to my mother. Then I tore it into pieces. Then I fitted the pieces back together. Dear mother, I am looking for missing pieces. When they fit like this, I will be back. Love, Nate the Great. I put a pancake in my pocket. Then Sludge and I went to Ros Rosamund's house. Rosamund's house, sorry. Rosamund was outside with three of her cats. Rosamond looked strange, but she always looked strange. Hello, I said. Did you leave a note on my doorstep this morning? Did your cats tear it? No, Rosamond said. I did not leave a note on your doorstep. I looked at her cats. They look strange too. My cats had been with me all morning, Rosamond said, except Big Hex. Big Hex spent the morning in his favorite tree. Big Hex tears paper, I said. Yes, Rosamond said. Big Hex tears rips, scratches, shreds, cuts, slits, and slashes. I see, I said. Did Big Hex tear, rip, scratch, shred, cut, slit, or slash a piece of paper today? Ask him, Rosamond said. I look up. I saw a big hex sitting on a branch of the tree. I, Nate the Great, was in luck. I saw a piece of paper stuck on a twig close to big hex. Too close. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the pancake. I threw it on the ground. Big Hex jumped down and started to eat the pancake. I reached up and grabbed a piece of paper. Now I have two pieces. I put them together. They fit, I said. It's a message, look. Now the paper says, invitation, come to my house at three. Vita was part of invitation. You solved the case, Rosamond said. No, I said. There's still a missing piece with the name on it. What name? Rosamond asked. The name of the person who wrote this invitation wrote the invitation, I said. I, Nate the Great, will find the missing piece. 
I will find it before three. I started to leave. Wait, Rosamond said. Big Hex wants to thank you for the pancake. How does Big Hex think? I asked. With a kiss, Rosamond said. I, Nate the Great, did not want to be kissed by anyone who tears, rips, scratches, shreds, cuts, slits, and slashes. No thanks for the thanks, I said. Sludge and I ran home. It was time for lunch. I made some pancakes. I gave Sludge a bone. We ate and thought, where is the missing piece with the name on it? I, Nate the Great, had to know by three o'clock. Sludge and I started out again. I saw Annie and her dog Fang coming down the street. They were with Finley and Pip. Pip does not say much. Finley says too much. I, Nate the Great, am looking for a piece of paper with a name on it, I said. Why are you great? Finley asked. I solve cases, I said. I find and I find out. Why don't you find the piece why don't you find the piece of paper? Finley asked. Nate the Great will find it, Annie said. Ha! Finley said. Maybe he's great, maybe he's not. Pip said nothing. Finley and Pip walked away. Sludge turned and followed them. I turned and followed Sludge. Annie and Fang turned and followed me. I saw Finley drop a piece of paper into the sewer and walk away. I looked into the sewer. I did not see the way it looked. Oh, I'm sorry, Aim says, I do not like the way it looked. But the paper was there. It could be the missing piece. How could I get the paper out? I, Nate the Great, needed something long and sharp. I saw something long and sharp beside me. Fang's teeth. Then I had an idea. I looked down at the paper again. It looked blank. The paper must be on the side that is facing down. I mean, sorry, the print must be on the side that's facing down, I said. We must wait. Wait for what? Annie asked. Wait for the water in the sewer to make the paper very wet. The invitation is printed in ink on thin paper. When paper is thin and the printing is on, on its dark, water can make the printing show on the other side. Then we can read the name. But won't the printing look backward? Annie asked. Yes, but nothing is perfect. I need the great say that nothing is perfect. The paper was getting wetter and wetter. I saw some printing on it. I saw a phony clue, I said. I, Nate the Great, was mad. I had never had a phony clue before. I don't know what to do. I did not know what to do, sorry. I could not find the missing piece. I looked at the pieces in my hand. I, Nate the Great, thought. Then I said, I'm looking at what I have. Perhaps I should look at what I do not have. How can you do that? Annie asked. When you do not have it. Look, I said. When I put the two pieces together, the empty space that is left is shaped like a boat. So the missing piece is shaped like a boat. I, Nate the Great, will look for a paper boat. What if you can't find it before three o'clock? Annie asked. Then I'm, then I'm sunk, I said. Sludge and I walked and thought. I, Nate the Great, had seen a boat today. But where? It was not on the Atlantic Ocean. It was not on the Pacific Ocean. It was on a paper ocean. Sludge and I ran to the paper ocean. The paper boat was there. I fitted my piece. I fitted my pieces of the invitation around it. Ah, they fit. The paper boat was the missing piece. The paper boat 
was blank. It did not tell me anything, or did it? Now I know, now I knew that someone wrote an invitation to me and did not sign it. The same someone tore the invitation into pieces and left one piece on my doorstep and put one piece in the tree and pasted one piece on the paper on the paper ocean. Someone did not think that I, Nate the Great, would find who the someone was. I looked at the paper boat on the paper water. Hmm. Paper and water. I had just seen paper and water. The phony clue in the sewer. I, Nate the Great, had an idea. Sludge and I ran home. I filled my sink with water. I took the two pieces of the invitation, turned them over, and put them in the water. Now the print on them was wet and backward. I, Nate the Great, looked at the printing. There was that funny E again. The printing was the same as the printing on the phony clue. I, Nate the Great, knew the case was solved. It was not yet three o'clock. There was an invitation I wanted to answer exactly on time. This was an invitation I wanted to answer exactly on time. I, Sludge and I, ran around the block and around the block until it was three o'clock. Then we went to Finley's house. Finley was with Pip. Pip did not say anything. It's three o'clock, I said. And I, Nate the Great, am here. I have answered your invitation. Finley. Finley gulped. I, Nate the Great, say that this is no such thing as a phony clue. The printing on the phony clue is the same as the printing on the invitation. You wrote the invitation. You tore it into pieces. Finley gulped again. Pip opened his mouth. At last, he had something to say. I win. He said, I told you, told Finley that you would solve the case by three o'clock. I lose, Finley said. You are a great detective. Thank you, I said. I, Nate the Great, felt great. I was glad the case was over. Sludge and I started to run. We ran past Annie and Fang. I solved the case, I said. I knew you would, Annie said. Annie and Fang started to run beside us. We ran home for pancakes and bones.